So Galliard and Sonia were itching for a fight. Come here. They both took the left fork while we went to the right. And that is when we heard it, the sound of rolling dice. We wondered why we had ignored these words of sage advice. portfolio. Don't you know you never split the party? Clerics in the back, keep those fighters hale and hearty. The wizard in the middle, where he can shed some light. And you never let that damn thief out of sight. Grab your plus one phaser of Klingon slaying. It's time for another episode of Trekosophy, the Star Trek philosophy podcast. Joining us today, our technical guru. His D20 is made of pure dilithium crystals. It's Chris McGee. The only problem is they roll at warp speed. And when he rolled up his character stats, they came up snake eyes. It's Ben McLean. I am immune to your fallacy because of my base level philosophy stat. And I am Bill Allen, a.k.a. the guy with the red dice. And this is Trekosophy, the Star Trek philosophy podcast. And in in case I wasn't clever enough with our opening theme for this week's intro, we're going to be talking about alignments. Yes, indeedy. Now, Did I get that joke alignment? right? I I was I don't know if I yes. even said it right. <laughs> that actually that it actually works. was 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 a great joke. That was one of your better jokes. <laughs> okay, I have to so agree. I mean. <laughs> I don't mean to insult your other jokes. You've had a lot of good ones. I'm just saying that was for a guy who's never done any of these dice and paper games. You came up with that perfectly. Oh, I've <laughs> picked up enough of the lingo uh, to be able to come up with a few little things. So you no. don't need your when you're a tourist in uh, Gygax land, you don't need to keep your little uh, phrase book out. You can just find the bathroom on your own now. <laughs> right so anyway well, um yeah. uh, this, this podcast in... is all about the philosophy of star trek and, and a big element of philosophy is the whole question of uh right and wrong good and evil morality etc 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 and most people who are into one type of uh, Star Trek sci-fi geekiness, are into others. So I'm sure many of the people in the audience are familiar with uh, D&D's alignment system, but... Yeah, I'm we're also... not, not talking about car alignments, okay? Yeah, I'm also sure that a lot of our listeners who were born after the Atari was invented may never have played any of the old dice and paper uh, role-playing games. So, Chris, as our resident uh, guru and DM, uh, give us a brief description of what the alignment system is. Okay, I'll try to do this off the cuff. Well, basically, in its most basic form, alignments is basically sort of the ethical system in a uh, role-playing game. And and originally, there were only three alignments in the very first edition of uh, Dungeons & Dragons back in the late 70s, good, neutral, and evil. And whenever you created a character and you wanted to play that character in the game, you chose whether or not your character was good, evil, or right in the middle, neutral, aligned. Couldn't, Couldn't I put my character's morality into park? Unfortunately, that one was n- never one that uh, Gary Gygax created. Sorry. <laughs> but um, then later with the invention of uh, or the creation of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, uh, that oversimplified uh, good, neutral, and evil alignment system was taken a step further and created another axis rather than just having good, neutral, and evil. There was also a lawful, neutral, or chaotic axis added onto it. So you could combine all three of those together based upon not only were you was your character doing deeds that were good for others and yourself or evil for others and yourself, but also whether, whether or not you followed a law, a system of laws, whether or not it was your own you know, laws or or, um, those of society. Or if you were chaotic and just did everything on a whim without any bearing on whether or not it followed 
any particular laws, or you did something in the middle, neutral. So combining the three, and I'm sure anyone could, uh, out there in our audience could uh, Google alignments or D&D alignments and find them. So the grid goes basically as follows. Lawful good, neutral good, chaotic good, then lawful neutral, true neutral right in the middle, dead center, and then chaotic neutral. And then on the evil axis, lawful evil, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. And so if any character you created for your role-playing game uh, could be any one of those nine possible alignments. Now, I don't remember if it was uh, with AD&D or if it was second edition, but uh, I think at some point, didn't when it originally came out, if you were lawful good, you were lawful good. And if you tried to do something that was not lawful good, your DM would say, yeah, your character can't do that. But I never it, actually played, yeah, those originals. I, I don't know if they were that strict about it back then, but yeah, that's essentially, and that still carries over today. In in some of the systems, though, hasn't it been where your alignment shifts over time, depending on the actions where you take, you know, that whole... Uh, right. If you continue to do something evil over and over, even though your character is lawful good, written on her character sheet, then... Uh, yeah, your GM might say, all right, uh, you need to change your alignment, and here's maybe some other penalties that will happen to your character because of this, because you didn't play their character the way you created her. Right, Kind of the, uh, to reference an uh, uh, older episode that we've already done, the uh, Moral Event Horizon. Oh, that's right. I had forgotten about that one. Uh, I don't think that's quite the same, because alignment changing in D&D... Could go in both directions. Yeah. Well, the whole point of the moral event horizon is that this is an irrevocable uh, one-way change. Well, the the moral event called, horizon would be the last if step. If you pass you just, it, yeah, if you pass if you that pass horizon. Uh -huh. But you can slingshot around a black hole to get some pretty good speeds up there and travel back in time. So there's uh, it's a similar concept how evil do you have to be to be really unredeemably evil that was the basic concept behind you know good people do bad things cisco uh towed the line quite often and still is considered a good guy ducat occasionally did good things but he didn't do enough to get away from that event horizon so i mean in, in later editions of star trek to relate it to what this show is all about in, in the later series, um, there was character development and story arcs that led to growth and change in the characters so that over the run of a show, the alignment, if we were to assign one to the characters, which is what we plan on mm -hmm. doing, <laughs> uh, the alignment uh, shifted a little bit. But in the TOS, and we're going to start with TOS because they were fairly straightforward. There wasn't a lot of character growth we were seeing who these guys were and what they did once they were who they were we didn't see kirk go from being a goober to being the best captain in the fleet he was the best captain in the fleet and this is what yeah, the best captain right. does it was a very episodic series nothing serial about it really so since we're taking this episode to uh explain the alignment system a little bit before we go into trying to peg each character as being of a certain alignment. Um, we'll do TOS this time around because their alignments are fairly set in stone. We don't have to get too convoluted and in-depth into <laughs> who is what. Well, I'm sure we will. Thing, he was lawful good, but towards the end of the series, he kind of changed into something else. Yeah, well, uh, Odo is a good example of that. He starts out, he's uh, lawful neutral. He just as easily uh, work as the, the chief That's constable true. for the Cardassians as he would for the Federation. But by the end of the episode, there was character growth, and he was somewhere between lawful good and neutral good because... He learned to bend the rules a little bit, but he also learned to fight for causes that were morally right and not just obey the law. So, I mean, it's 
there's change and growth in the later ones. But we'll get to them. Let's start with uh, the original series and kind of dive right on in this. Now, now, here's a quick question that we probably ought to address right off the bat. Do we start with naming each of the nine alignments and then naming which characters fit that alignment? Or go the opposite route nah, and just, just go through characters. each of the cast members and say which alignment that particular uh, character we're gonna go by cast to. member. Yeah, we're, we're. I think we should go by cast member because there's the um, you you shared oh, a character. Uh, I should say not cast member. Or, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, by the character because I mean you uh, you gave us a link in our prepping for this podcast, and it's sometimes hard to find uh, a good fit for some of these like uh, chaotic evil, chaotic neutral. I'm not sure I'd really put those guys. You know, it, it, it's sometimes hard yeah. to find fillers. So they've got freaking Charlie X in as a chaotic neutral. Um, and that's probably a good example, although I honestly would have switched. They've got Charlie X as chaotic neutral. And in this picture you sent us, we should probably put a link to this in the podcast when we put it together. Yeah. For chaotic be- evil. It's, uh, it's Gary Mitchell for chaotic evil. Honestly, I would switch those two. Really? You got your your stay on track. All right, staying okay. on track. Yeah, <laughs> I tend to wonder. Yeah, anyway, we'll so we're gonna start with the characters first. I gotta ask, uh, since since Ben is least familiar with the alignment system, have we explained it well enough that it makes sense and you can see what where we're going? Two variables, three choices each makes nine possibilities. Go. Okay, Captain Kirk. Captain James Tiberius Kirk. Well, he's obviously chaotic. Mm. Is he? Yeah, he bends the rules all the Not time. Not all the time. I mean, there's plenty of times where he's a stickler for... I mean, his personal... I mean, he might bend Starfleet's rules, but his personal rules are, are fairly straightforward, and he sticks to them. He... And fairly unwritten. His 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 duty is to his ship, to his crew, to Starfleet. Kind of somewhere in that order. Maybe it's to his... Yeah, I would say more neutral, and I'll explain thusly. The third edition D&D rules define law and chaos as follows. Law implies honor, trustworthiness, obedience to authority, and reliability. That's not entirely perk, I, I would say. Of course, on the downside, lawfulness can include... Closed mindedness, reactionary adherence to tradition, judgmentalness, and the lack of adaptability. Those who consciously promote lawfulness say the, that only lawful behavior creates a society in which people can depend on each other and make the right decisions in full confidence that others will act as, as they should. However, chaos implies freedom, adaptability, and flexibility. On the downside, chaos can include recklessness, resentment toward legitimate authority, arbitrary actions, and irresponsibility. So I'm not sure that would apply to Kirk either. Those who promote chaotic behavior say that only unfettered personal freedom allows people to express themselves fully and let society benefit from the potential that its individuals have within them. So someone who is neutral with respect to law and chaos has a normal respect for authority and feels neither a compulsion to follow rules nor a compulsion to rebel. They are honest, but can be tempted into lying or deceiving others if it suits him or her. And that's from the third edition D and D rules. So I think based on that description of the law and chaos axis, I I think uh, Kirk would fall into the the, uh, neutral category there. I think so, yeah. I mean, he would break the rules, but only if it was... I mean, his first first rule was protect the crew, protect the ship. Right. So if he had to break other rules in order to do that, he would. And just so, like most captains, he tried to adhere to the Prime Directive, but break it plenty of times if he felt it was necessary. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think we can safely say... Uh, neutral good for Captain Kirk. Because, I mean, I don't think anybody's going to argue that he's not the good guy. Right, right. I mean, I also have descriptions of that from the third edition rules as well. 
But we'll get into that probably in a little bit here. All right. Then we have Kirk's soulmate, better half, <laughs> whatever you want to call him, the the brains behind the whole operation, Commander Spock. Ben, what do you think about Mr. Spock? Well, I think Mr. Spock's probably lawful good. I tend to agree. Um, primarily because of his logic. Um, what do you think there, ben, uh, Bill? I I don't want to dissent just for the sake of dissenting, but I think... Be, be, <laughs> um, I mean, logic is neither good nor evil. I, 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 I would... He's true. I, I would think he's somewhere I'm kinda wanna say lawful good because he is representative of, of structure, of order, of discipline, of everything embodied by lawfulness, and he is good, but at the same time uh concepts like good and evil, I mean Vulcans are pretty utilitarian in their philosophy. They they will Oh yes. He will do the math. If he flips a switch and it's gonna kill ten crewmen, but it's gonna save a hundred, he will kill those ten crewmen without hesitation or remorse. Mm -hmm. So I, I kinda wanna say lawful neutral. I mean I'm edging towards lawful good, but I wanna say lawful neutral for for sure Spock. But think about this. Think about this. Who the hell in Starfleet is going to align as good if not Mr. Spock? Kirk. I mean, oh, he's, I thought you already made him neutral too. Neutral good. I guess I wasn't listening. Kirk is neutral good. Yeah. Oh. Oh, sorry. Spock, you guys are saying lawful good for Spock because there's the good axis, evil axis. Pretty much everybody in Starfleet we can generally say is going to be good. I don't think there's any bad people. on. There might be a couple of neutrals, but I don't think Starfleet's going to have any uh, evil. neutral. You know, some of the admirals doing their shady deals might be considered neutral. Uh, and, they're, they're... and wait till we get into Section 31, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I don't think anybody in Starfleet would qualify as evil. I'd even hesitate to put Klingons and Romulans on the evil side of things. Maybe, but we'll, we'll get to them. I think, I mean, I kind of want to say Spock is lawful good, but part of me thinks he would be lawful neutral. But with two out of three people saying lawful good, I think we're going to have to go with that as our final answer. That's a tough <laughs> one, really, though. I, I, do, it, I do like your explanation or Mr. Spock being lawful neutral, though. Dr. McCoy, Leonard yes. H. Um, I personally would say he's definitely good, at least. I can't imagine him being neutral on that good, good evil axis. Yeah. Um, ben, what's your thoughts? On Spock? Oh, sorry, on McCoy. Yeah. On McCoy. Oh, sorry. Uh... McCoy, I'd say he's chaotic good. Okay, why do you think that? Well, Mr. Spock is always saying there's this rule we have to follow, and McCoy is always saying, nah, we don't have to follow that rule because we have to do what we feel like doing because emotions and stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think um, <laughs> part of me wants, I mean, this is another one where I'd say, you know, he should, he, that McCoy should be neutral good, but I, I'm going to agree with, uh, I'm going to agree with Ben. Um, chaotic good. If Spock, uh, if Spock represents lawful, uh, McCoy represents, he, he's the yin to that yang. Yeah. In, in this whole convoluted relationship of theirs. So if, if Spock represents lawful, McCoy represents chaotic. And it's definitely not, neutral in McCoy's with him being a doctor and the Hippocratic Oath and the first do no harm and saving lives is definitely uh, good. Definitely chaotic. Definitely good <laughs> and probably chaotic although part of me thinks he might be chaotic just to spite Spock. That if Spock <laughs> wasn't there he'd be neutral good. Hmm. Uh, well I think they're all 
I, I I'd count them all uh, all three of you know it's almost not worth talking about the uh align the the good evil alignment for the Star Trek people because they're all the good guys. Well, yeah, for the fleet we can safely assume. All right, right. all right. Um, then we'll go real quick. Lawful, neutral, chaotic. Um, Mister Scott. Oh, uh, he's definitely not lawful because right. he's always it's either neutral he's always, or chaotic uh, for him. I'd say he's neutral because he's always, uh, you know, uh, what do you call changing uh, the laws of physics? He's always making up his own engineering standards. That, that sounds like chaotic to me. <laughs> uh... Yeah, yeah, but on the other hand. Uh, you know he's always following orders yeah. from the captain. So the, the the things where he 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 makes up his own rules, I don't think necessarily that makes him um, chaotic or neutral because it's not like he he's not defying any rules. There are no rules. When, when, when people he's Except the guy he breaks who the laws of physics. On, Those well, laws are out the window. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but at the same time, it also goes to show that maybe they didn't know the laws of physics quite as well as they thought they did, so they didn't understand the law. Okay, okay. It's like, if there was ever anybody to embody that little phrase, he wrote the book on such and such, yeah, Mr. Scott wrote the book on Starfleet physics. He even admitted it, too. At so he, he's the guy who actually made the rules. He predates the law. He's 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 probably neutral or chaotic, but I think he's grandfathered in to count as lawful, since what Scotty says is what becomes the law for engineers down the road. But, That's kind of silly. <laughs> well, we can agree to disagree. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say uh, neutral good for him. I'm gonna say neutral because all right, I can meet you halfway there. Yeah, because he yeah, does. He does. I mean, yeah, he's the guy who made the laws that everybody else is going to follow. But at the same time, he he also like that whole. I need an hour. You got fifteen minutes. Okay, it's done. He's very uh, whimsical. He lies a lot. So neutral, neutral, good for Scotty. All right, let's uh, whip, whip through some more here pretty quickly. Um, Sulu. Not much. We don't have a whole lot of uh, uh, character development. Yeah, lawful from good. him in in the original series. Lawful good. I would, yeah, I would say so. I would say probably the same thing for uh, Chekhov. Yeah, I, I think for Sulu, Chekhov, and Ohura, we can safely just uh, call them because they weren't exactly um, nuanced or developed right. very well they and that's were just you know be it's a 60s show you're not yeah. going to give your secondary cast members you know the limelight very much yeah um and that chance to character develops development right and just to flush this out a little bit we've um we're safely assuming everybody in starfleet is good we need to start i'll throw yeah. out some I'll throw out Time for the guest stars, probably. Non-Starfleet examples to see if we can uh, nail some of the other categories. Uh, the Tholians. I have no idea. I remember the Tholian web is one of my favorite episodes, but I have no idea. <laughs> then you should know them better than us. <sighs> Lawful neutral, perhaps? I'm thinking... Uh... Well, with the Tholians and the Medusans, they were aliens that were just so weird and bizarre. If they were following laws, they weren't really laws that made sense to the humans. So, I mean, I wouldn't categorize them as evil. I would say they were neutral. I just don't know if I would say lawful or chaotic. What was their reason for trapping the Enterprise? I don't remember. I don't think they ever. It's been a long time. I don't think they ever gave one. They just they did it. <laughs> Gee, if only we had the like a Gene repository of knowledge where we to. could look up certain episodes from the original series and and get synopses from them. You know, get a crappy two sentence synopses that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, some kind of. Uh, <laughs> I don't some, know something some kind of. of 
resource Pfeiffer that had a memory of all of the events that happened in Star Trek, you know, starting like an A to Z, or if you will, yeah, an a alpha. primary memory of, of basically. Yeah, the alpha of memories. Right. Mm. If, if only. only such a thing existed. It doesn't say why the Tholians did it. Well, let me, wait, let me see if I can find Tholian Assembly. There we go. Uh, They're trespassing on the territory of the Tholian Assembly, and they must leave immediately. So they're very territorial. That doesn't really tell us if they're lawful or chaotic, I guess. But they didn't leave because they were trying to retrieve Kirk. Yeah. From the Defiant. Yeah. No, not that Defiant. All right. Um, we've pretty much. I think we've just about done the uh, original. Are series. you kidding? Uh, Klingons. Yeah, I was going to say we got Klingons, Romulans, we got Khan, we got so many. Klingons are chaotic neutral. Definitely chaotic, even though they do sort of have their system of laws. Back in the original series, that was out the window, pretty much. I would would say chaotic evil, but I don't want to argue with Bill over nobody really being evil. (laughs) No, 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 no. We were talking about Starfleet members not being yeah, nobody uh, in starfleet's really evil right i mean yeah but you already said you didn't want to make the klingons out to be evil. i mean so you could make well, a no, case for it that in they were the scope of the original series that's what we're looking at here not they, in they, later series they were the bad guys i mean right they were opposed to the federation i would probably say the klingons were more evil than the romulans but that's just me um, Definitely more chaotic than the Romulans. There's no question about that. Yeah, I, 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 I'd say either neutral evil or chaotic neutral. Not quite up to the par of being chaotic evil. Yeah, uh, I guess I would say chaotic really neutral if I, their, if I had to. Uh, say anything about the Klingons. They're really out for their own benefit, not just hurting people because hurting people, so I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Romulans? I think they're lawful Roman. <laughs> lawful neutral, I'd say. I could agree with that. What's that? Uh, Romulans, Romulans lawful neutral? Lawful neutral or true neutral. I mean... <laughs> Mm. They're very beware, Romulans bearing. They're the very room, inscrutable. We've only saw there was only like what four or five episodes featuring the Romulans, at most. Yeah, um, true neutral, lawful neutral, somewhere in there. Okay, okay, um, fair enough. Khan, I, I am tempted to say chaotic evil. Um. Uh, I think he's neutral evil. Because, after all, he is the one that said that we offered the world order. Yeah, um, that's why, well, him offering the world order is why I would say lawful evil. It's just his laws. Yeah, I was going to say, who can say what his laws are like, (laughs) what his order is. His laws seem pretty arbitrary to me, so I would, I would, I'd say, uh, neutral evil. Okay, okay. Uh, who else can we toss out there? Um, Organians? Mud. 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 <laughs> um, Harcourt, Finnegan, Finnegan or Phineas? I think he's chaotic weenie. I mean, chaotic neutral. Okay, and I, I definitely <laughs> want to use the alignment system that Ben has invented with uh, the weird combinations. I would totally roll a chaotic weenie character. No, I'd be a Roman. <laughs> I'd be a, a, a lawful Roman chaotic weenie. Harcourt Fenton <laughs> Mud, by the way. Fenton. Okay, it's Fenton. Okay, Harcourt Fenton Mud. Harry Mud, true neutral. I mean, he's not a nice guy. He's in it for the profit. And he'll lie, cheat, and steal, but he's not totally chaotic because, you know, he's, if he makes a deal, he holds up his end of the bargain. 
ish, but he'll also sell a starship that doesn't belong to him. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, true neutral. I tend to agree with that. Yeah. Uh, Lives by his own. Trelane. Trelane. Oh, chaotic. Just screams at me. Chaotic. Definitely chaotic. He's one of those godlike beings the rules don't apply to. Probably chaotic neutral. I think though. he's chaotic evil. You, you, evil, really? You you you'd list Trelane as evil. Well, he's trying to just play with people's lives like they're toys. And it's kind of malicious that way. Uh, okay, chaotic evil, according to D&D, is a character that tends to have no respect for rules, other people's lives, or anything but its own desires, which are typically selfish and cruel. Um, okay, now I don't know if Trillane's desires are cruel exactly, but they're definitely selfish. Yeah, I can, I can, I can see, I can, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm waffling between, uh, and chaotic neutral says it is an individualist who follows his or her own heart and generally shirks rules and traditions. Um, da, 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 da. It's their own freedom that comes first. Good and evil comes second to their need to be free. Free spirited do not enjoy unnecessary suffering of others, though. Like Catwoman. Yeah, because I don't think he. Hmm. Uh, that's a tough choice. I would probably say chaotic neutral, though, if I had a choice. Tribbles. <laughs> Twibbles are... Oh, not to. Twibbles are chaotic, uh, chaotic good. And, uh, yes, I agree. If only because they're cute and fluffy, that's what makes them good, but yes. Oh, they're so fluffy. Plus, they have an innate dislike, an instinctive dislike of Klingons. So, <laughs> there's something that worked there, yes. Well, maybe chaotic. they're lawful good, and they're just their law is no Klingons allowed. Uh, I still think chaotic good, because that whole eating everything in sight and just... Uh, maybe uh, maybe they're lawful evil, and they're in a secret plot to take over the universe, only no one knows. Organians. They're Ooh, lawful um... good. I was going to say probably lawful good good for the... Uh-oh, audience. you guys have gone quiet on me. We're just very quiet people. Yeah, um... Oh, I, I hit the volume knob on my headset, okay. that's it. I'd actually say lawful neutral. They don't take sides in the you're right. yeah, you're Federation right. conflict. Um, they, yeah, okay. I was thinking they of probably... their preventing the bloody war for the whole other series is after their episode. But that's, that's, that's just their lawfulness kicking in. They've got this whole no war policy, but they also uh, equate the Federation to the Klingons. We're, we're the same in their eyes. So, you know. Yeah. Lawful neutral. And not in a good Captain Kirk way. Which is interesting, because, I mean, here you have lawful neutral Organians, lawful neutral Captain Kirk. What? Captain Kirk Kirk wasn't lawful? Neutral good, that's right, never mind. I'm getting getting my (laughs) X and Ys confused. Let's see, who else do we have? Uh, Apollo. Wow, okay, digging deep there. Um... Lawful evil? I guess. I, I don't remember his episode well enough. Lawful evil character sees a well-ordered system as being easier to exploit. It shows a combination of desirable and undesirable traits. While it usually obeys its superiors and keeps its word, it cares nothing for the rights and freedoms of other individuals and is not averse to twisting rules in its favor. I thought lawful evil was like a legalistic... <laughs> uh person like Inspector Examples Javert. of this alignment include tyrants, devils, undiscriminating mercenary types who have a strict code of conduct, and loyal soldiers who enjoy the act of killing. Right. And right, right, they, right. Uh, they cite examples as Boba Fett from Star Wars and X-Men's Magneto as being lawful evil characters. Right. I was thinking Inspector Javert from Le, from Les Mis. As my archetypal lawful evil guy. 
I can see that working. I don't know. There's just something about, I mean, uh, there's a whole pantheon and structure, uh, gods and worshipers, but with Apollo being the god, uh, worshippers were there just to be food or a power source or whatever. He didn't really have good thoughts towards the people under him. They were just food. Okay. Which strikes me as being... Were they food? I don't remember not, that. Not physically. He didn't pick them up and chomp on them, but he fed off of their psychic worship energy or whatever it was. Oh, that was that the what source it was? of his power. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I think you're right. That's, that, that's why I would go that way. Right. Okay. So, how about the Orion Slave Girls? <laughs> <laughs> There's a complex one for you. If well, we in terms of just original series, and uh, mm, uh, chaotic, so uh, chaotic neutral. Sure. I mean, when you go off of uh, what Enterprise revealed about the truth, maybe push them into chaotic evil or neutral evil. But uh, I no, mean, cause, they cause... weren't exactly evil. I just call them, and and they'd be lawful because they are the law. Yeah, but that whole they they kind of create disruption. They they. Their it'd power be, comes they'd from. They'd be lawful neutral, I'd say. Their their power comes from disrupting and disordering everything around them. So I don't know if I'd make them lawful. I'd definitely make them chaotic, and that's a whole well, pheromone, pheromone thing. I guess thing, they're so. kind of they're kind of chaotic. They're kind of chaotic to the Enterprise, but in the context of Orion society. That's the Orion normal. So and in, uh, they're in lawful. In, so they're lawful in so Orion society. We're, we're bringing in the the Enterprise series. Just because it's just because it's yeah. interesting in this one case. <laughs> this one case changed, yeah. And in Ben McLean's uh, new alignment system, they are considered chaotic hubba hubba. <laughs> 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 okay, oh, Brandon, Kirby. My cough worse. Brandon Kirby, that one's for you. I know you're out there in the <laughs> audience somewhere. He's one of our four listeners. Yeah, I wish he'd come. Wow, we doubled our listeners. Oh, I think yeah. I made him mad. Um. Well, no. Basically, he uh, he wrote a book and got published and. Now he's all of a sudden he's big too times cool now. for yeah. school. <laughs> he's too cool to hang out with us little people, you know. He's he's hobnobbing it with the elites of uh philosophical literature. Yeah. Well wow. um, but we're his guilty pleasure. He's out there hoisting one and drinking and listening to this. So uh yes, yes, chaotic hubba hubba, that's for you, Brandon. Right. That's for you, K Dog. All right, um, <laughs> Gary Mitchell. Oh uh, man, it's been so neutral. long since I watched this stuff. <laughs> just say uh, yeah, chaotic neutral, no matter who else we name. We're just starting to run out of <laughs> all the guests are no. chaotic neutral. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, was there ever? I mean, for have we picked anybody who was really chaotic evil? I was. I know I was leaning towards a couple that way. Yeah, I was leaning Trelane. Con that way, but. Uh, uh, yeah, con lawful evil. Well, let's, definitely. Let's, let's he's... look at chaotic evil here and, and see what uh, Watsi's description description is. Um, oh, I already described a little bit, but a little bit more about this is um, they do enjoy the suffering of others and view honor and self discipline as a weakness or weaknesses, um, such as like serial killers and monsters of limited intelligence. And um, the Joker. Yeah, they they also mentioned some examples as Carl Denham from King Kong um, and Riddick from Pitch Black or Chaotic Evil. Okay. I have not seen either of those, sadly. Yeah, yeah right. well, Pitch Black is sort of his redemption story. He did start out Chaotic Evil and kind of went to... Uh, somewhere between Chaotic Neutral and Chaotic Good. He is a crazy psycho killer dude, but it's a crazy psycho universe. And he 
did save all those people from the night <laughs> terror flying hammerhead shark alien things. Okay. Um, no, Pitch Black is an interesting little movie. You'd get a kick out of it. Um, okay. It's on my list of things to see. Yeah. Chaotic Evil in Star Trek. Original series. Who would I peg <laughs> for that? There aren't really, other than Khan, there aren't really all that many really exciting villains. And the only reason we really remember Khan as a really exciting villain is because of the Wrath of Khan movie. Yeah, his his Probably, original yeah. story was was kind of thin, kind of weak. Yeah, it wasn't one of the top ten episodes there's until nobody after. Like, there's nobody like Gal Dukat. I was going to say Dukat yeah. is off the table here, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no super villain like that in in the original series. The most they have is a is a, is a that guy who's Kirk's Klingon rival. I think General Kang is his name, isn't it? He was one of them. Yeah, there was uh, Core as well, I think. Right. Um, and uh, those guys, they they were the villains, but they weren't ever... They always had some semblance of, uh, you know... Koloff. Yeah. Personal decency on some level. Garth of Izar. Who? The guy with now the you're reaching freaky obscure characters. No, he's not. Well, he's less obscure to me because of the whole Axanar fan film that's in the work. But um, shapeshifting, uh, he was a former Star Trek Starfleet tactical genius, big hero of the war, um, got mangled on some planet after the war. The aliens there uh, used their alien powers to heal him and give him superpowers and make him their leader. And he kind of wanted to go from being leader to being God and conquer the universe. And he had that weird shape-shifting ability, uh, got locked into a Starfleet hospital for the criminally insane, tried to impersonate Kirk. You're definitely reaching. You guys don't remember that one? Yeah. The whole imperson he impersonated Kirk. There's a, a there's two Kirks. One of them's the imposter. One of them's the real deal. And Spock's looking at him, and the real Kirk. This is like the first time they ever did that whole. You'll have to shoot both of us. Okay. It's the only way to be sure. And Spock knew the guy who said shoot both of us was the real Captain Kirk. It's like the first time that particular cliche had ever been done on TV. So it wasn't a cliche when they did him. it. Wouldn't it be crazy if the one who died in Star Trek yeah, he probably is. Uh, Generations actually turned out to be the clone all along? Sometimes you gotta wonder. <laughs> um, well, what about the uh, salt vampire woman? I mean, um, you mean the, uh, uh, the the no kill eye? Uh, no, 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 that no. was a horda. And the Not horda. The see that that. That's one thing that Star Trek did uh, a, a lot of, I think, is, is they introduced a character that, that immediately your f first thought is, if you're shallow, like, like you know, or young, uh, you would think, oh, that's chaotic evil right there. But then they would develop that character through the course of that episode to show you, oh, he's not, or she, or it is not chaotic evil, actually. It's just something else. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no, that I think that was one of the underlying lessons regarding the whole peace and tolerance thing that Star Trek was trying to teach us was that there 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 isn't really any evil. There's just you know, mm -hmm. you got to understand the enemy's shades perspective. Of gray. That shades was Roddenberry's idea. Yeah. And uh that's why Deep Space 9 remains my favorite series. <clears throat> Sounds like someone's tired. Well, I I am in my final weeks of yeah. uh, two college degrees. How much how much time have we put in on this? Because we're we're getting close. We're, to we're very better. very close to it. What you guys don't have stopwatches right now? Shame on you. Yeah, my dog ate it. That tired old I excuse wish. again. I tell you, my dog's been going crazy lately. She chewed up my Kindle. She chewed up 
I mean, she didn't damage the Kindle itself, but the nifty little flip open cover, the nice little leather thing that, you know, protects the Kindle, gone. Ripped to shreds. She chewed up a uh, empty photo album, one of those little tiny three by five mini flip top photo. Yeah, chewed that up all to hell and back. She's gotten in this phase where all of a sudden she's just chewing things left and right and it driving me crazy. Every time you come home, something else has been wrecked. She's in that rebellious teenage phase of being a dog. Well, we could probably keep going on and on, but um, we'd be reaching deeply into the episodes by then. And I think we've reached pretty much our time limit now, so we probably, yeah. probably should call this an episode. I'll say that there is, there is a warning, like a lot of the lessons in those Star Trek episodes are... Um, variations of the old uh, we're the real monsters kind of thing yeah um from the perspective of the 23rd century 20th century humans were either chaotic or evil or often both or i don't know if chaotic stupid is a thing but that was probably part of it too oh here's a good one for you last one gorn oh yeah there's a there's a lawful evil Yeah, I'll say I would. I, 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 yeah, okay. Lawful evil or <laughs> lawful, lawful neutral. You right, wasn't the Gorn trying to like awful? conquer the galaxy or whatever? They were trying to conquer their old. Ter- I mean, it was their territory. They were there first. Right. And it, it was, oh, okay. That makes but, them lawful, and they're evil because lizards are evil. Well, more than just <laughs> lizards being evil, um, powerful aliens transport you to a planet. Um, yeah, you're going to fight to the or death. Or some Smash TV. You're going to fight to the death. Yeah, it's basically these aliens <laughs> say, here you are, fight to the death. So the human captain is all like, wait, let's reason this out. Let's, let, let's, let's not jump right to it. Uh, let us fight with our brains, not with our fists. Yeah, he's like, let's see if there's a way to avoid fighting. If there's no way to avoid fighting, yeah, I'm going to make a, a Gilligan bamboo cannon and I'm going to kill you. But he doesn't jump right into doing that. Right. Um, the lizard's like, raw. Yeah, it's like you, you beam him to the strange planet, and it's like, kill the other guy. He whips out his boomerang of death. I mean, raw. so, yeah, lawful evil. Okay. That's a well, good call. That's a good call. Not for, I'm not some kind of speciesist against lizards. Some lizards are your friends, okay? <laughs> uh, I think the Star Trek writers were, because... Have they ever had a nice lizard on Star Trek? Aren't lizard types always bad? Have we seen other lizard types? Garrick. Oh, you're going to bring in... Cardassians lizards? I've... Yes. They are? They're reptiles. They're, they're I reptilian Well, I would base. say they're reptiles, but I wouldn't call them lizards. But we're getting way off topic here. We need to wrap okay. this up. Okay, that makes sense. All right, all right. But yeah, Gorn, lawful, evil. He's like no problems whipping out that bladed boomerang of death and just going to kill the human. I got to watch that again. It's been too long. Yeah. All right. Uh, but there was a, there, there's a there's a there's an underlying lesson that says that I- inside every lawful good person is a chaotic evil person that wants to set things on fire. That was, I think, one of the 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 the, the themes behind the original series to remind us that. Uh, the reason why the Enlightened Federation had a law that was just as fundamentally uh, stupid as the Prime Directive was because they knew, no matter how <laughs> lawful good the Federation was, they knew that deep down they sucked. And there was that potential for evil that would be exploited if they didn't keep themselves in check. Right. So... People? Yeah, uh... Peoples is peoples. Indeed. All right. Well, I think we've harped on enough about the alignments in the original series. So uh, You might say we uh, we tried to come up with a way to extend this episode, but we failed our saving throw. Yes. Yeah. Sounds good enough. Yeah. I need better uh, gaming type metaphors and puns. Anywho. Yeah. You 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 uh you rolled low. 
Ben, uh, let him do the outro. Actually, let, let's let Ben do the outro. I, I, oh, I know okay. that we kind of did let's, let's railroad him. It. Yeah, we kind of. Oh, that's going to be great. Like us on Facebook. <laughs> no, I'm okay. <laughs> I can do it. Because we did oh, kind sorry. of railroad him into doing an episode that left him out, having not been uh, grown up with the alignment system. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, you have been listening to Trackosophy, the Star Trek philosophy podcast. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter as uh, at Trekosophy. And tune in next time when you will hear Chris say, hey, "Googly moogly," <laughs> and then, and then, um, what else do I need to say? Email that us. We may or oh yeah, that too. Oh yeah. Um, due to the fact that I'm hopefully graduating next month, and things are just busy and crazy. We are uncertain of the future of Trackosophy at this time. So there may be a hiatus. Uh, We may have to suspend our regular schedule and go to a a semi-irregular schedule for a while. Mm -hmm. But uh, we hope to bring you more Trackosophy in the future at some point, we hope. So... Don't die and stuff. Um, is there anything else I need to say here? Email. Oh, that's right. You can email us all of your flames and death threats at trackosophy at gmail.com. Rest assured, they will be blamed on Gamergate. <laughs> um, Apple Store, Google Store... Yeah, we are <coughs> we are we are on the iTunes store uh, for free as a podcast. I don't believe we are on Google, but every so often I try to upload our episodes to YouTube and when YouTube doesn't censor us via the uh, content ID system, they stay uploaded to YouTube. So that's handy. Um so you can check us out all those different ways and of course the main way is to download the podcast directly at our beautiful website designed by Chris P. Trekosophy.com We are going to want to be recruiting more members of the show if possible just because it's kind of the more the merrier. So if you have any interest in uh, Star Trek or philosophy you know, even if you only have an existing interest in the one and would like to develop an interest in the other, either one, then get in touch with us because we, we'd love to have more people. Given how squirrely our schedules are, if you're interested in Star Wars, if you're interested in Starfish, <laughs> uh, we, 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 if you're interested in um, Battle of the Network Stars, you know, we're... We're hitting schedule crunch time, and we're just ruining everybody's sleep cycle. So, uh, if you can come up with something, and you want to jump in, we're here for sure. All right then. Well, we'll see you next time. Roll the dice to tell me if I'm getting drunk. Check us out on Instagram. Look for our ad in Good Housekeeping. Mention this podcast and we'll give you 10% off your next haircut. Sweetheart, do you have a lighter in your pocket? No, I'm she's just happy me. to see you. Oh, that's, a, that's what Chris said. Uh, I lost the foam that goes on my headset's uh, microphone. Is that bad?
Um, yes, now the NSA can listen into your conversations. How old are you, Bill, anyway? I'm, I'm Murtaugh's age. Let's just leave it at that. I'm getting too old for this stuff. We need your help. Okay, I kind of vaguely remember something like that. Almost. <laughs> You're doing very well, Bill. You need to audition. Thank you, Commander. I have had some practice. I have studied the historical documents. 